So we're going to work through a number of examples now involving trigonometric functions um, and inverse trigonometric functions, but let's start with the trig functions. So we know how to deal with sine and cosine, right? Because those, those ones are pretty straightforward, right? Antiderivative for sine is negative cos. Antiderivative for cosine is sine. Um, we don't yet know an antiderivative for tan. So what do you do? Well, when in doubt, if you can't come up with anything else, try writing it in terms of sine and cosine and see if that gets you anywhere. So we can take tan, right, and we can write that as sine x divided by cos x. Okay. Now, this actually does suggest a substitution, right? And, and because, I mean, we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. We know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And, and of course, when you're doing your substitution, right, you, you want to pick the function so that when you take the differential, right, when you compute du, you have that derivative times dx up to a constant. And so we see this sine x dx. You know, if that could be our du, we would be in business. So the suggestion here is that what we should take is we should let u equal to cosine x. So if we do u is cosine x, then du will be negative sine x dx. And of course, we, can, we don't have that minus sign there, but we can just multiply both sides by minus 1. And so we have minus du is equal to sine x dx. Okay, that puts us in business. Now we can come over here and we can say that this is going to be the integral of, so 1 over cos becomes 1 over u. Sine x dx becomes negative du. So let's put the minus there. Minus 1 over u times du. Okay, and we know an antiderivative for 1 over u, that's just the natural log. So we get minus the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, and we can now put back that u is equal to cos x. So this becomes minus the natural log of the absolute value of cos x plus c. Um, now, some people don't like leaving the answer in this form because you get this minus sign out front, and I don't know, for some reason we don't like having too many minus signs around, right? Um, so what we can do is we can, we can remind ourselves of one more fact, right? Let's remind ourselves that minus the natural log of some, let's say, u is the same thing as the natural log of u to the power of minus 1. And that's going to work whether or not there's an absolute value in there. It's still going to hold, right? 1 over an absolute value is, doesn't, yeah, it's fine. Um, so we can bring that minus 1 up, and then we get cos x to the minus 1. So we get the reciprocal of cosine. Uh, but 1 over cos, we know what 1 over cos is, right? 1 over cos is secant. So we get the natural log of secant x plus our constant. Um, and that does it. Um, of course, if you want to check your answer, we can always take the derivative and, and confirm, right? Why don't we do that? Let's just check quickly. If I take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of secant x, okay? So I get 1 over the inside, so I get 1 over secant x. I got to multiply by the derivative of secant x, which is secant x times tan x. And conveniently enough, those secants cancel out, leaving me with tan, which is what's supposed to happen.